I have next to me here, not a box of wine, but 10 kilograms of green coffee beans, which have been nitrogen flushed and vacuum packed before they were shipped from Brazil. And that's how we received this month's Roaster's Choice coffee. Now, it's got a long name. It's called Ipanema Premier Cru Colina de Oro B65 Cherry Gold. Quite a mouthful, but each part of that name references something about the origins of this coffee. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that. So the easy way to do this is take each part of the name in turn and explain what we're talking about. So Ipanema is the kind of parent company, if you like, that owns the farm on which this coffee was grown. And then we have Premier Cru. So they have a farm called Rio Verde, and that's based up in Brazil. And they've set aside the kind of high altitude plots on that farm to grow their Premier Cru range of coffee. And these plots vary in size, they've got different soils, they've got different aspects, and they will grow different varietals of coffee on those plots. So what we have here is a specific micro lot from their Premier Cru range. Each year, they give their harvest a brand name, and the brand name this year is Colina de Oro, meaning Golden Mountain, and that references the landscape of the region in which the coffee was grown. And then we have B65. So the B references the varietal that was grown on that plot. They grow three varietals, but only one varietal on a specific plot. And the B stands for yellow bourbon. And we know that bourbon coffees tend to have a nice sweet flavor profile. The 65 is a reference to the specific plot that this coffee was grown on. And finally, we have cherry gold. The cherry is a reference to the overriding flavor profile of this coffee. And then we come to gold and they use four categories, if you like, to talk about the kind of overall cup quality. They have black, gold, blue, and diamond. So there we have that name that kind of, they're trying to express the origin of this coffee, but explain that it's grown on a very, very specific uh, micro lot. And across the farm, they've got multiple micro lots creating different coffees with different flavor profiles. We had to choose this coffee carefully. We were sent multiple samples uh, from the farm. The thing is, we couldn't look at the labels. We had to blind cup them because when you think th see things like cherry gold on the front, you would be swayed uh, towards various coffees. So the team blind cupped a series or a selection of coffees from the farm. And this one was our overriding favorite. So aside from cherry, what else? can you expect in the cup. Now it's a wild fermentation, natural process coffee. So it's been fermented beforehand and it's been dried in the sun. So we are expecting an abundance of fruit and abundance of sweetness in the cup. You know, that cherry flavor definitely comes through. And I'm thinking more like those uh, cherry sweets used to have um, years ago, like little cherry lips. They've also got a bit of a floral character to it as well. But the one thing we couldn't get away from back at the roastery as a team is that this coffee has a real fruity, but also a bit of a zingy character. And we just couldn't stop thinking about those starburst sweets. Um, that zinc was from a bit of a lime profile in the cup. It's not like an lime acidity at the start. It's a lime flavor that kind of develops um, from this coffee and you just can't get away from that overriding fruity zingy kind of character from the coffee. So there we go this month's Roaster's Choice. We really hope you enjoy it. As always we love to hear your thoughts, comments and even questions about this coffee. Thanks for watching and have a great day.